All right. Shall I remind you? Shall I remind you that we will have examination this week on Sunday, 1 p.m. till 4 p.m. Once again, there are three problems. One would be shear balance. The other one would be equation using equation. The third one would be something mixed. It's something like question that asks you. Uh, several concepts. Okay, so we finish the energy balance, energy part, energy transport, and we will move on to the last part of the course, which is uh, mass transport. All right, and comparing between momentum, energy, and mass, mass transport is the most difficult one. So we will spend about four weeks and a half or five weeks talking about mass transport, right? In the same manner as momentum and energy transport, mass transport can occur in two ways. Molecular transport or molecular mass transport and convective mass transport. Once again, molecular mass transport does not require media to move, does not require movement of the media fluid. On the other hand, convective mass transport would require a flow of the fluid, right? So you have flow of the fluid, that flow carries mass out. For example, if you have someone wearing a perfume sitting among you guys, and if we turn off all the air conditioning, there's no flow of the air inside this room. You can still smell the perfume, right? That smell reach your nose by molecular transport, no movement. On the other hand, if someone put air condition on or put some fan to blow air over that person who wears the perfume, everybody would smell something. That's because the vapor of the perfume is carried by the stream of air to everybody else. Okay? That case, that is convective mass transport. All right? Now, considering molecular mass transport, in molecular energy transport or molecular momentum transport, molecular transport takes place by means of driving force. Molecular momentum transport, what is driving force for molecular driving force? What is driving force for molecular momentum transport? Velocity difference, right? What is molecular, what is the driving force for molecular energy transport? temperature difference. So can you guess what is the driving force for molecular mass transport? It's supposed to be related to mass, something different which in terms of mass. Mass usually represented in terms of concentration. So therefore, driving force for mass transport will be concentration difference. Okay? Now, the problem is, can you give me examples of unit for concentration? How can we describe concentration? Normally, people are familiar with concentration in terms of mole per liter, right? That's one way to represent concentration. But you can also represent concentration in terms of mole fraction. Mole fraction also gives you an idea how concentrate the species would be in the system. You can represent concentration in percentage by mass as well. You can also use partial pressure to represent concentration. High partial pressure would equivalent to high concentration. So there's so several 
kind of system that can give you an idea about concentration. Okay? In our course here, we will divide it into two groups. The first group, let's, let's start with the first group. It is mass basis. Now, in terms of mass concentration, it is it represents species, how much mass of that species that you are considered are there in your system per volume. Okay? Now, if you have mixture that contains more than one species, suppose you have species A and species B together, the concentration of A can be represented by term of mass of A per volume of the solution, right? That's one way to represent mass concentration, okay? Normally, mass of A per unit volume would be represented by uh, the sign then um, rho A. We use rho because if, let's say, component A in the mixture, okay? Now, if you consider pure species A, If you take mass of A per unit volume, what is this? It's density, right? So it is density of species A. Now, are they the same? <laughs> 